Now, first, Victorian Premier Daniel Andrews banned media from his trip to China, and now journalists were barred from covering a speech he gave at a Chinese forum on Monday night. Herald Sun reporters were turned away at the door from the China Chamber of Commerce event. And to make matters worse, the Premier has now refused to hand over his speaking notes. Well, there was a speech. Um, I had some notes. I didn't necessarily refer to those in great detail, but... I simply made the point that the China-Australia partnership and the China-Victoria partnership is critically important to jobs, to exports, to international education, to food, wine, to every sector, really. No idea. I wasn't, wasn't, wasn't my event. I was there, the Lord Mayor was there, Andrew Robb was there. Hop, 300 people were there, uh, some of them from China, some of them who are from here and do business in China. Yeah. In Senate estimates, Senator James Patterson quizzed foreign affairs officials after discovering what he said are links between this forum being sponsored by one of China's top spy agencies. Have a look. One of the sponsors for this event is the China Institute for Innovation and Development Strategy. Um, this is a group which, in Alec Joski's book, Spies and Lies, he says there's very strong links between the Ministry of State Security, uh, China's principal foreign intelligence agency, and uh, this body. Um, uh, Mr Joski didn't have the benefit of parliamentary privilege when he wrote his book, so I can go a step further and say it's a front group for the MSS. A front for the MSS. Well, let's bring in Shadow Home Affairs Minister James Patterson now. James, thank you very much for your time. Look, a front for the MSS. This is the Ministry of State Security in China, its top intelligence agency. Is, if this is true, how is it the case that the Ministry of State Security could indirectly be sponsoring a forum in Australia where the Victorian Premier is giving a speech? Well, just to expand on that for your viewers, Shari, one of the points of evidence that Alex Joski points to in his book is that one of the senior advisers at this institute is formerly the director of operations for the Ministry of State Security in North America. In other words, he's the chief spy for the Chinese government in the United States running operations against the US government and trying to steal their secrets. He's now an advisor to this group. And this group is a sponsor of this forum. And the vice chairman of this group was a key speaker at the forum. So the links seem pretty clear to me. And that's why I said what I said uh, in Senate estimates last week. But what's particularly troubling is that uh, Australian politicians, no less than the Premier of Victoria, felt appropriate to participate in this forum, safe in the knowledge of this information, thought it was appropriate to deliver a speech, even though there was no Australian media allowed, although we've learnt that Chinese media were allowed and then didn't even release the transcript of the speech after it was delivered, which is just one of those basic uh, you know, transparency measures that all politicians should engage in. It's deeply, deeply worrying. I mean, the, brig the bigger point here is our very values of freedom of speech, freedom of our media and sovereignty, whereas you come up against the Chinese Communist Party system where they don't have any freedom of the press. So, you know, when Daniel Andrews travelled to China, media weren't allowed to go along with him. Again, we're seeing this example, but on Australian shores in Victoria, does it seem like the Victorian government is just kowtowing uh, to Chinese to the values of the Chinese Communist Party? Well, the Victorian government under Daniel Andrews has a very long track record of very poor judgment when it comes to its engagement with China. Daniel Andrews was all in on China and in, at one point in his government required all of his ministers to travel to China every year, no matter what their portfolio, no matter what the relevance was. And we saw the fruits of that uh, excessive uh, and you know, exuberant engagement with China with the Belt and Road Agreement, which Daniel Andrews uh, signed in contravention of very clear advice from the federal government. And a whole new act of parliament had to pass. So the federal government had the power to cancel that agreement and prevent Victoria from contravening a national security interests, um, which was a dis disastrous thing for a state government to be placed in a position to have, done, have, have happened to. So th there's a long track record of, of poor judgment here. It clearly doesn't have the expertise uh, to make these decisions, doesn't have the advice to make these decisions, it clearly mm. doesn't feel the need to consult the federal government on it. When I asked the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade about this at estimates last week, they had no idea about the forum. They said that mm. the Premier hadn't sought their advice about it, hadn't asked their permission to be involved in it. Uh, and so if he's not getting advice from DFAT, who is he getting advice from when it comes to its engagement? Mm.